Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So, I do have some new stuff to review. I just received sort of a package from Ishin with new products they released. This is first the TX16X, which is basically a Radio Master TX16X with a few slight differences. Um, very interesting product. And we do have another beginner 5 inch quad. Pretty interesting because I reviewed a few of those lately the Diode in Roma and the IF Light Nazgul. So let's look at what Ishin has in store here for beginners that are looking for a low budget 5 inch freestyle quad. This is the X. 220 V2, also known as the Ishin Wizard, the V1. This one isn't called Wizard anymore. I don't know why, but it's basically an evolution of that. So let's dive right into it uh, and start maybe with this quad here. All right, this is the Ishin X222 V2. Let's take a look at the frame first. Pretty simple frame, detachable single arms here, and very, very sturdy. This, you know, as you can see, there's almost no cutouts on the plate here, this is a 2.5 millimeter bottom plate, five millimeter arms, pretty wide also, 15 millimeter by five millimeters, so very, very, very robust. The frame does come with a ton of TPU parts. I mean, look at these motor protections here. I mean, this is great for a beginner. The motor is basically completely encased here in TPU and these um, injection molded parts. It does also have a sort of protection brace here in the front. So there's two layers of carbon. So I would say for a beginner, this doesn't look like a bad frame. It's it's probably really, really sturdy. And there is one detail I sort of liked. It has a top plate that is detached in, in detachable in two parts, which makes it pretty easy to access all the electronics without having the camera assembly fall apart. Um, let me quickly grab a hex key to show you. Okay, so all you have to do if you want to take up the top plate is remove three screws here, the two in the rear, and this one here in the front. It's an interesting construction. There's basically an additional layer of carbon here, slightly shorter, um, slightly shorter standoff piece of carbon here, and here there is a press nut. So actually, this is an idea I really like. I might even use this on some of my designs. Very, very nice solution. Um, good attention to detail. And of course, you can now take off the top plate without having this camera assembly completely fall apart, which usually happens if you could take this off too. You know, these camera plates here fall apart and the whole thing gets very annoying. So actually well done. Now, uh, while this thing is already disassembled, let's talk about the electronics we have on board here. So very basic stuff. 600 milliwatt VTX. And that's more than you need. MMCX connector, so this thing should be quite robust. I mean, this all looks good. I like that this is all stacked. We have an F4 processor here, which does have, interestingly, a USB-C. I mean, which is quite nice. That's a more, uh, more recent standard than the uh, micro USB. And interestingly, it does have something that, I mean, that has gotten very, very rare. It does have a PCB and single ESCs. This is something that you hardly, hardly see these days. Now I'm wondering why they did that. I don't know if it's cheaper or if it's actually intended to be more beginner friendly because it's easier to repair if an ESC breaks. Possibly yeah, it, could be, it could be an advantage for a beginner to have these ESCs accessible. Apart from that now, I mean, it is really a bit old school to have these. No one really does that, but okay, they went for these um, separate ESCs. I don't see, also I don't see any downsides of having these separate ESCs, so why why not? Um, the receiver here in the rear, the small one here is something I actually added. It comes with the TS, uh, TX16X, with the radio came in a package, looks a bit like an, you know, size is similar to an RXSR, um, but that one's not included in the package. The um, antenna tubes here are neither. These aren't included. I had to add them. The antenna is a lollipop. I think this looks like a, I mean, it's not, I don't know. No, it doesn't look like a fox here. It looks cheaper. Um, you know, you can sort of see here where it was joined, but okay. Uh, small antenna. 
seems okay. Now, so fine, so far, everything is okay. The camera is a, um, what is that? A fox seer. I cannot even read that. Let <laughs> me quickly check what kind of camera this is. Okay, so no indication. I really looked hard here. No indication on the camera what model this actually is. Just says wide dynamic range. So some sort of fox seer camera. Well, who really cares uh, as, as long as it works? And I'll test it out um, in the field. Now, so far, honestly, actually everything looks pretty much okay. I mean, this is a very cheap quad, so the electronics really look decent. Some people will really like the separate ESCs, could be good for beginners, so not too bad. The only issue I see is the motors here. So here again, I mean, these are really dated. I mean, these are, you know, these are just too old school. They still have the clockwise and counterclockwise threads here on the mount. And as you can see, this is not a, I mean, first the construction quality is pretty poor. I mean, these windings don't look very nice. And then, I mean, you have a single piece bell. So that means, you know, this is aluminum here, possibly um, cheaper aluminum alloy. And the shaft here is part of the bell. So this is all just one piece. So it means you have an aluminum shaft, which is way, way weaker um, than a titanium or steel shaft. So these will you know, tend to break compared to a more high quality motor where the shaft is of a different material. So that's a pity. But again, for such a cheap quad, that is not a huge deal breaker. One real problem I have is, I mean, these are you know, counterclockwise and clockwise threads, depending on which motor it is. Of course, that's really, no one really does that anymore. No more of manufacturer. That's super annoying because you need counterclockwise nuts and you need, you know, you have to be careful not to confuse them. It's annoying, but now really the problem starts because they did. So they include four prop nuts, these four here, and you would expect the you know one color to be clockwise the other to be counterclockwise but in fact they're all clockwise so they don't fit on two of the motors which have counterclockwise threads here so actually if you take this rod out of the box you cannot mount the props I, I you know i had to look very hard in my old boxes with stuff to find some counterclockwise threaded nuts um for this to work so this is a problem these are different colors but they're all clockwise threads and i think the silver ones here uh, will not fit on, no, they fit on this motor here. But, you know, they will not fit on the, yeah, the ones with counterclockwise thread. The silver ones don't fit. And the black ones do not fit either. So there's a problem here. There's another problem also is that, you know, now they have clockwise and counterclockwise motors, but they mounted them all wrong. <laughs> they are mounted in a way, so if you check here, this motor, it, how it's configured in Betaflight and BL-Heli, this one is spinning this way, so normal prop direction. So it's spinning clockwise, but this is the counterclockwise motor. CCW counterclockwise. Same thing here, this one, um, I think, wait, wait, this one here should be, you know, this one here is spinning counterclockwise, but it's the clockwise motor. So they're they're all mixed up. Uh, it's all reverse. So I think something here, I don't know if it is this an early production model or something, but something got messed up here. Wrong prop nuts and um, yeah, wrong motor motor orientation, basically. They, they should change the direction these motors spin and reverse the motor direction in beta flight or just mount these motors otherwise. It's not going to be a huge problem, but uh, it's, you know, uh, shows that something went wrong here with quality control, basically. All right, so last thing to check is how much this thing weighs. I expect this to be fairly heavy. So this is with a receiver, 386 grams. Oof, yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> it's pretty heavy, but I mean, it's not a, you know, for something that is really robust with a lot of TPU parts, um, yeah, you know, weight seems fine. It, it, it's not too bad. So overall, um, I think that's about it. Let's see how this thing performs in the air. By the way, the beta, beta flight is already completely set up. The only thing they messed up is the OSD setup. The OSD setup isn't really, isn't really done. 
Um, all you have is the battery voltage. No fly time, nothing. So you have to set it up yourself if you take this out of the box. But again, this, this could be an early production model uh, with still a few issues. I don't know. Maybe that's why the, the these uh, prop nuts were wrong and the beta flight OSD setup wasn't complete. But apart from that, I couldn't find any problem yet. But let's see how this thing performs in the air. And But before we go out and fly this, let's take a look at the, the radio controller from Ishin I also have. All right, so this is the TX16X. This is the box here it comes in. And in, this is going to be a very short review because this is basically just a Radio Master. This is made by Radio Master. It has a few, um, yeah, few slight changes in the layout. Basically, it's just these buttons here, um, these one to six buttons that are on top here on the Radio Master. And it's got one improvement that I think is actually quite nice. So as you can see, there's all these little adjustment screws here, little hex screws you can go in. And what you can do here is you can um, limit stick travel with these two and you can adapt the uh, stick tension with this one here and this one here. So actually, I think, I mean, you can li limit your, your um, stick travel for throttle, for example. You can adjust the stick tension. I mean, this is something nice that you don't have to take the radio controller apart to do so. Later, I mean, once you've adjusted this, you're probably never going to touch them again. So, you know, is it a huge advantage? No. Is it a incremental improvement of the product? Yes. Um, you know, so why not? And it's a bit cheaper than the Radio Master. So probably if I had the choice, you know, why not go for the Ishin? It's got one more feature and it's slightly cheaper. I think it's uh, 100 and... 150 euros while the radio master 160 something but apart from that it's everything is the same multi-protocol module it does have hall sensor gimbals you know the ergonomics i mean this is not the, the type of radio i prefer i really prefer small radios like the tango but i mean this doesn't feel bad feels quite nice in your hands you can reach the buttons nice there's there's enough space to put your fingers so i would hold it like this as a pincher Or like this as a fumber, so this is actually totally okay. Welcome to Open TX. It's got the nice throttle warning, switch warning, color display, which is in my opinion something completely useless for FPV. <laughs> Nobody needs these displays, but okay, if you're if you're also you know flying fixed wing planes or something, this might be useful. But apart from that, I mean, if you want to know how this thing performs in general, how it's just you know, look up a video, a video of a review of the Radio Master TX16 because it's basically the same thing. But honestly, overall, I mean, I never held a Radio Master in my hands. The TX16, although it's quite common, I have to say, I mean, yeah, nice quality. It's it's a bit bulky for my taste, but this is all very subjective. But overall, if you need like a mid-range radio that isn't too expensive, but has multi-protocol and all you need, and you want this, you know, classic style of radio controller, this is probably what you should go for. I wouldn't go for anything much cheaper, because, you know, if you buy this once, this is going to, this is going to work for a very, very long time for you, no need to upgrade this, this is, you know, this will be absolutely fine. So, I would say recommendation, yes, if you are looking for this classic style of radio and maybe the radio master is out of stock or something or you know you really like the feature here with the gimbals all right so let's take all of that stuff outside and fly it and by the way i mean i just forgot to mention the um Ichin quad also does come with a gopro mount i'm not going to be able to use this unfortunately because it's i think it's only for a gopro 7 so the 9 will not fit inside here First world problems, that that won't work. And it does come with two sets of props. Um, it's a star prop, so, so far so good. Yeah, and then stickers, some zip ties, but that's, that's basically all you get with this quad here. All right, so let's take this thing outside and fly it. Okay, so first thing I noticed is that there's two OSDs on top of each other, so you still see the Foxier OSD of the camera. They didn't uh, remove that right off the, off the box. The problem is they also didn't include the little uh, controller that you plug into the camera to change the OSD. 
So if you buy this, you will be in trouble if you don't already have a Foxio camera and this little, uh, you know, controller thing with the buttons to remove this OSD because uh, you will not be able to get rid of it. So that's a bit of a problem. Now, regarding flight performance, well, I'd say it's it's actually surprisingly bad for such a um, such a five inch. I don't know how they made this fly worse than just a five inch on a stock tune. To be fair, I have to say I use pretty old batteries, but that's not really you know doesn't shouldn't really influence the tune. So the tune is pretty bad. The handling is really not very nice. Might also be these props that are on there. Uh, but this thing feels a bit loose, out of control. You can hear that the tune is off when it flies. Just some, you know, some some weird uh, oscillations sometimes. So it doesn't fly horribly. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not a real problem. Especially a beginner will probably um, not be bothered by it too much. But it really compared to something like an iFlight Nazgul, this is horribly bad. And we shouldn't forget that the Nazgul is only something like 40 euros more expensive, so 20%. And this is also basically my overall conclusion. I mean, don't buy this, uh, buy an iFlight Nazgul. Get, you know, spend a little bit more. I'll also link this in the video description. This is also the last, I also made a review video about it. This is the last uh, five inch I reviewed. And it's just so much better for a little more money. The quality of the parts is much better. So honestly, I wouldn't, you know, spend spend a few extra dollars or euros, get the iFlight Nat School. It's not that much of a price difference, and it's way worth it. That is that is sort of my conclusion after um, after flying the Eshin X220. Another aspect is that you can get the iFlight in a 6S version, which you cannot here with the Eshin and. These days, I would also, for a total newbie, I would recommend going for 6S and simply throttle limiting the quad so it's not too powerful because this will prevent you from going through the pain that I went through back in the day, which was buying 8 or 10 4S batteries, so spending hundreds of euros on batteries, then, you know, only just to just to upgrade a few months later to 6S and then to have hundreds of euros worth of useless batteries. So go for 6S right away, throttle limit the quad if it's too powerful for you and your skills, and you know, you will avoid having to buy two sets of batteries basically. So honestly, it's it's just really, really quite simple decision. There's, there's nothing, there's, there's no advantage in, in saving these 40 euros with the Ishin and not going straight for, for an iFly quad or a Diatron Roma for that matter too. These also perform very well. So any HGLRC, Diatron, iFlight, you know, more high quality brand quad will have a much better performance than this. The uh, transmitter on the other hand is very, very nice and something I can absolutely recommend. Um, yes, it's, it's basically the same as a Radio Master, but you know, I would just Go for the one that is uh, on sale, cheaper, and uh, in stock. So, but honestly, it, it's very nice. Although I am a I am a TBS Tango guy, and I moved away from the sort of classic, um, you know, bigger shape radio controllers. This one feels really really nice. Um, I felt you know felt at home right away. It's really easy to hold it. I didn't have any strap to put it around my neck, but still. It was very nice to hold. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not too heavy, not too light. The sticks, the hall sensor gimbals feel really great. Overall, ergonomics are absolutely, absolutely nice. So honestly, not not too much to say about it. You know, it's um, it's OpenTX, but as a quad pilot, I'm not using much of the OpenTX function. I basically just go for the generic quad uh, quad setup, bind my receiver, and that's it. But speaking of receivers, the receivers that the receiver that comes with the radio controller, the the small Ishin receiver, is a D8 receiver, and it's, I mean, it's really bad. You can basically throw it away. The, the it's it's D8, and I had like low RSSI warnings being something like 100 meters away. So honestly, I do not trust that thing. It's it's really not not that great. I mean, maybe for something very small like a whoop. 
but something that you plan on flying further away than 100 meters, I wouldn't use it. Don't trust it. So, uh, yeah, overall, just to summarize this, I cannot really recommend the X220, the, the quad. I would rather go for a Diatone iFlight or HTLRC and spend a few extra dollars. Uh, but the radio controller here is absolutely great and something I would really recommend. All right, guys, thanks for watching.